everyone, this is Wags from Eagle Dynamics, and this is episode 4 of our Hornet Academic Series. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at three of the most commonly used instruments in the Hornet. Uh, the heads-up display, or the HUD, the upfront controller, or the UFC, and the IFE, the Integrated Fuel and Engine Indicator. I touched on these instruments in earlier videos, but I want to take a closer look at these before we get into more advanced functions, such as landings, navigation, and weapon usage. So here we are in the Hornet cockpit, and we can see the three primary elements that we'll be talking about today. We have the heads-up display, the UFC, and the IFE. We'll first talk about the HUD. So the heads-up display is probably one of those useful instruments in the Hornet, and not only will it provide very useful information on the attitude of the aircraft, it will also be indispensable in terms of weapons delivery and navigation. And in later videos, we'll be really taking a harder look at navigation and weapon HUD. But today, we're going to focus on just the very basic HUD symbology that you'll see throughout the different HUD modes. Uh, so let's get started on that. Uh, here at the top, we have our heading tape with a carrot in the middle, which indicates our heading. And in this case, we're looking at a heading of about 291 degrees. Uh, below that and to the left, we have our airspeed as indicated knots. And to the right of that, we have our altitude, which can be either barometric or radar and you'll have radar altitude available when you're below 5,000 feet, uh, as we can see here. And when radar altitude is selected, you'll have the R. If you have radar altitude uh, selected uh, for the HUD and you're above 5,000 feet, it'll show barometric altitude and you'll see a flashing B instead. Above the altitude, you have your uh, vertical velocity indicator, and above that, you have your standby bombing site. In the center of the HUD, you have your pitch ladder and total velocity vector, which can be caged and uncaged. And when it's caged and the velocity vector is not showing true, then you'll have your ghost velocity vector. To the left, we have our angle of attack, our mock, our current G, and then our peak G. And then here along the bottom, you have your roll angle indicator. So at the very bottom of the USC, we have some additional controls for the HUD. Right now, we're in normal mode with all the symbology shown, but we can also go to Reject 1 and remove the boxes, the, the mock, the G, and other uh, symbology. Or we can go all the way down to Reject 2 and remove more information like the heading tape. But we'll go back to Norm. Uh, next, we have the brightness control for the HUD. A day night switch. A brightness control for the angle attack indexer lights. Displaying bar barometric or radar altitude on the HUD switch. Our attitude selector. And the other switches here control uh, video display on the HUD. We'll talk about that in a later video when we start talking about those sensors. So that's a little look at the HUD. Uh, let's talk about the USC now. So the UFC is your primary instrument for inputting information into the Hornet, and this will most likely either be navigation or weapons related. So let's take a look at some of the uh, primary functions that will be available on the UFC for the early access version. So first we have the uh, ADF, which you can set to 1 or 2, which corresponds to either the COM1 or COM2 radio uh, channel selected for that ADF beacon. Then you have your uh, volume for your uh, COM1 radio. Then you have the indicator for which uh, radio preset is set for COM1. And then you have your selector for COM1. On uh, the center, you have your uh, keypad. And above that, you have your scratch pad. And the scratch pad will have the information that you input through the, uh, the keypad or through one of the DDIs or the NPCD. Uh, for example, um, you know, here we have a uh, Mark 84 selected. And we can go ahead and select USC. And now we have the ability to set a quantity or multitude. So I can hit quantity, uh, set uh, two, hit enter, and now we have a quantity of two. So it's really as simple as that. And you'll see this uh, general um, ability to set information uh, from the DDI to the FC and then back to the DDI quite often in different modes. And for example, we could go to uh, TACAN, uh, select uh, transmit receive. We'll go ahead, uh, turn it on clear it out. We'll select uh, number 44, which I think is Sanaki. Enter. And that's as simple as, uh, again, using the UFC to select your attack uh, end channel. 
So then here to uh, the right, you have your option select buttons, and to the right of that, you have your option select windows, which will have different information depending on your DDI page or one of the buttons down here, be it uh, autopilot, IFF, uh, TACAN, ILS, and so forth. And then further to the right, we have the uh, brightness for the overall UFC. You have MCON, which will shut down uh, emitters such as your radar. Then you have your volume control for COM2 radio, and then your indicator for COM2, and then of course your selector for COM2. And that's pretty much um, how the USC functions for now. There'll be additional functionality placed in later, but that gives you a little overview of how to work it in the early access. So now let's uh, move on to the IFE. So here we have the IFE, or the Integrated Fuel and Engine Indicator. And this will be probably your most important tool for monitoring what your engine is doing, uh, your fuel state, as well as some handy time functions. So let's take a look at some of the indicators here for your early access version. Uh, the first is our engine RPM, which will be 0 to 100. And at 100, it essentially indicates full military power. There is no additional indication for afterburner. Uh, afterburner is usually best indicated by your fuel flow. Uh, below that, we have our engine temperatures as EGT, exhaust gas temperature. Uh, below that, we have our fuel flow. Uh, below that, we have a more of a graphic for the nozzle position, 0 to 100. And at the very bottom, we have our uh, oil pressure as a PSI setting. Uh, to the right, we have our total fuel. And below that, our internal fuel. And below that, our current bingo setting, which can be adjusted with the two arrows here. Uh, single press the arrow changes it by 100 pounds. Or holding it down, you can do a more rapid change. And at the bottom here, we have our time functions. And we'll talk about the elapsed time here in a second. Now in the center, we have some buttons that uh, we'll discuss now. Uh, the first is the mode button. The first press of the mode button will go into a maintenance mode, and then the second will go into a time setting mode. We'll take a look at that now. So we're in time mode now, and now we use the quantity button. Uh, so right now we can use the arrows to set our uh, hour, and then our minute. And this is our difference hours for Zulu. Now we can set our year, our month, and our day. And then I'll just wrap back around again. Now let's come back out to the mode switch. Now if we go to the, uh, the quantity uh, button, we can get some more detailed information about uh, where the fuel is. So right now we have FL, which is the, and FR, which are the left and right feeder tanks. Uh, we press it uh, again. And we have uh, TL and TR, and those are the left and right transfer tanks. Then we have the uh, left and right wing tanks. Then we have the uh, left and right uh, external tanks. And then, of course, we have the center tank. And now we're back out again. Uh, now coming down, we have the uh, zone button. And this will uh, be either the uh, local time or the Zulu time. So we press zone, we now we have the Zulu. And now we're back to local again. And then finally, at the very bottom, we have our ET button, or elapsed time, and a, uh, essentially a stopwatch. So our first uh, press starts the stopwatch. A second will pause it. A third will restart it. And if you hold it down, it'll go back to zero. So that's a little look at the IFE. So that's been a little look at three of the most commonly used instruments in the Hornet, which you'll definitely want to have a pretty good feel for once you get into the more advanced functions such as navigation, landings, and in particular the weapons. So uh, until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Thanks.